Alright guys, how's it going? So I did promise I would make another visual scripting tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to quickly set up your own Pi menu. Now the affiliation links are in the description down below. If you want to buy the program, I get a small kickback, it always helps the channel out. So let's just quickly start this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the timeline, I'm going to change the editor type to visual scripting and I'm going to hit new. And this will create a new node setup for me. Now, this is just an example. I don't necessarily need these, so I'm going to quickly delete them. And let's drop down our very first node. So the first node that I really need is the Pi Menu node. So I'll press Shift and A and S to search. And I'll search for Pi Menu. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit. And let's give the Pi Menu a label. So let's call this Pi Menu Plus. So that's me pretty much got a Pi Menu set up. Everything's done. <laughs> Kidding on. What we need to do is we need to assign a key map to this pie menu and this means when I press a key it'll bring up the pie menu. So what I can do here is I can press Control A and S, drop down another node and let's look for the key map. Now you can see here it works in any space, properties, file browser so we can actually assign where the pie menu will show up. So what we'll do is we'll hit add shortcut instead of an operator or a panel we'll select pie menu, we'll go to custom and you can see here Pi Menu Plus, and this is the Pi Menu. Now what I'm going to do here is Control Shift, and I'm going to assign a shortcut, and I'll make it P, and I'll just compile the add-on just to make sure everything's working, and I'll just keep it default for the moment. So when I press Control Shift and P, it brings up Pi Menu Plus, and there's nothing there obviously. So let's drop the tool, and the next thing I need to do is obviously add some sort of button or operator. So I'll press Control and A, and I'll search for button. Let's drop it here. Let's take the menu and plug it into the layout. You can see that we now have a show menu. So let's give the button some text and let's make it nice and simple and we'll make it add sphere. Do we need an icon for this? Not necessarily, but we'll quickly give it one either way. So the next thing I need to do is obviously execute a function or run an operator. So I'll press Ctrl and A again. I'll search for run. And there we go, we have a run operator. Now let's just move this quickly out of the way and let's pipe in the execute to execute. Do we want to use an internal blender function or a custom operator? We'll use an internal one and we'll quickly search for something like sphere. So we have primitive eco sphere, add to mesh or we could do something like a UV sphere, so we'll use that. And you can see here we actually have a few options, we can already set the segments, we can kind of control the variables here, but I'll leave everything on default at the moment. I'll press compile and let's check this out. So when I press control, shift and P, we now have an add sphere. And that lets me add a sphere to the scene. Nice and easy, very basic stuff to be honest. So what I'm going to do now is create a custom operator and this is very easy to do as well. I'm going to press shift and A, search and I'm going to search for create an operator. I'll try and keep these organized the best I can. Same with working in any sort of node environment. The more organized you are, the better. So I have this create an operator, so we can give it a quick name and I'll call this something like display name. Do I need to give this a description? No, I'll leave it at normal. In terms of operating, none confirm or make it a pop-up and we'll just leave this at default. So now that I have the create operator, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to drop down an object context node. So if I type in object, you can see here object context and this is great. This means I can actually select the active object. So the next thing I'm going to do is drop down a set object data properties. Once this is down, I can then take the active object and pass this into the data blocks. So what would I like to do here? Well, I would like to display the name of the object. So let's search for name, display name, and let's pipe the execute into our create operator. And what I can do here is I can hit the plus sign and you'll see that it actually enables a true and false statement, display name is on, take it off. So now the next thing I need to do is assign this custom operator to our menu. So what we can quickly do here is we can actually copy these nodes, but sometimes it's probably best just to drop down new nodes, it means the programs, the code's a lot cleaner. So I'll drop down another button, Control A S button, and I'll pretty much repeat the exact same process. I'll go from menu to layout, let's call this display, now the next thing I obviously need is a run operator, so I'll press Control A S and I'll search for a run operator. 
and rather than using an internal function we'll use our own custom operator so i'll go to custom and you can see here display name and i'll plug this into the execute so let's compile the add-on let's select the sphere let's bring up our pi menu control shift and p and let's enable display there we go let's select this object control shift and p display and that is a very quick example how to set up a pi menu now there's one thing that you might actually pick up on what happens when I press Control Shift and P and I hit Display? Essentially nothing, because every time we do, we actually run the same operator. Now what you can actually start to do is build an IF and AND or OR statements, and you can also do like a Boolean switch, but I'll leave that for the next video. Do me a favour guys, support your third party developers, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me Twitter, support me Gumroad, you know what to do. Take care.